It is 6.15, which isn't 6 o'clock. My apologies for starting late. We had a session upstairs that ran a little long. At this time, I will call the regular city council meeting for Perry for Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. The order, please. We have a quorum. Item 3 is the invitation and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. If you are able, please rise. For the invocation, I would like to call on the Reverend Robert Jones for uh, his invocation at this time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the privilege of this city of we ask that uh, this meeting is conducted, it will be a meeting that glorifies your name, and that you would give us the wisdom to lead the city of Perry in the way that uh, just best represents In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I'd like to call on Councilman Riley Hunt to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you, gentlemen. Item four, our community partner updates. Is there a community partner with us tonight who wishes to give council an update at this time? to boards, commissions, and authorities. Um, let me note that we have an item 12 on the agenda that we, with the concurrence of council, we have decided to move it to uh, this particular item. It will become item 5B. But for now, item 5A is an appointment to the housing authority for the city of Perry. Council is in receipt of a letter from Mr. Ed Beckham, the chairman of the board for the Housing Authority for the City of Perry. It's very short. Dear Mayor Fairfoth, I'm pleased to tell you we have a candidate for commissioner for the Perry Housing Authority. Therefore, will you please appoint Mrs. Jane Thomas as commissioner for a five-year term beginning September 20, 2017. This is the date of the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners, and I'd very much like to have Ms. Thomas on board at that time, thank you for your consideration in this matter. In this matter, excuse me. Council, based on this letter of recommendation, at this time I will entertain a motion that we appoint Mrs. Jane Thomas as commissioner for the five year term as requested. There's a motion and second in the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 5B, which was formerly item 12. Is, uh, was under the other business supplemental agenda. Appointments to boards, commissions, and authorities. Um, under item one for that, there is an appointment to the Peary Area Convention and Visitors Bureau by Council Member uh, Randall Walker. Mr. Walker, are you prepared to make this appointment at this time? Yes, I am. The floor is yours. Uh, Mayor, we had a recommendation as outlined in the legislation from the Chamber of Commerce, and we've accepted that nomination. Ms. Trish Cosser is from Cosser Design in downtown Perry is consenting to serve on that board. Very good. Is this, um, Mr. Kimmel, one of the, those items that require a vote of council, or we can accept this recommendation by acclamation? It comes from the particular member of the council as the vote. Got it. Um, council, you have heard the recommendation um, that Mr. Walker has enumerated. At this time, I will entertain a motion that we appoint. Ms. Cossack, uh, for this particular uh, term for the period year conviction district bureau authority is described. Mm -hmm. Second. There's a motion in the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for moving that up. Now I can keep my word. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Item six. Our citizens with input. Is there anyone present who wishes to address council on any matter at this time? Thank you. 
Thank you. Item seven is a public hearing. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide any interested parties with an opportunity to express their views and concerns in accordance with OCGA section 36-67A-3C. Item 7A, the city is proposing to upgrade its water supply system to provide additional capacity and to replace the older water treatment plant with a new one. Decommission two wells and add two new wells with new connections to the existing system. Mr. McMurray. Yes, Mr. Council, let me grab the clicker here. <clears throat> Of course, most everyone knows me, Chad McMurray, representing the city of Perry from the engineering department. I'd like to welcome Mr. Sam Cargill. He's a consultant uh, hired by Constantine Engineering to help with this project. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to let everyone know that I have a copy of the environmental information uh, document if somebody needs to review that or has any questions regarding this information. How can I get this going? Gotcha. Okay, okay. Uh, first I'd like to discuss the need for this project real quickly. As you can see here, this is uh, the old water plant there highlighted in blue. And uh, it has, it has served City of Perry for at least 75 years, is in need of repair or replace. The city has done much research on this facility and decided that a replacement is needed. Uh, one of the Creekside wells have already failed and uh, is out of production. Uh, a, two new wells will be required to replace this old water plant and get the city to its 2030 projected demands that we need. So that's a uh, what we're looking at the need for this project. We did have uh, some alternatives to consider. Uh, there was really not a good option here for buying water from the county. It just didn't, didn't seem practical or feasible. Uh, the city did look at six different sites big enough to accommodate two wells and a new water plant, along with the rest of the improvements. Uh, the city, as you know, has purchased the lot at Tucker Road adjacent to the water tank and also in good proximity with um, the high pressure zone over at 341 and the low pressure zone there at Tucker Tank. So with these locations this is good access and the best uh, location for this water plant. Um, <clears throat> As you know um, the next topic here basic selection of the best alternative. Of course, I just mentioned the low and high pressure zones. Also, um, the future demands to construct a new water plant and the two groundwater wells. The remote well site will be in this green area here, and the uh, on-site well will be in this little small green area right behind Barber Calhoun Park. Of course, the water plant itself will be on this lot directly behind Barber Calhoun Park at uh, on Tucker Road. The Georgia Environmental Financing Authority Drinking Water State Revolving Fund is uh is, is has to be approved is approved this site and will be paid for this project. Lending the money. Yeah, the money. That's lending the money. The oh, lending the money. I'm sorry, lending the money. Oh. Um, they're still paying for it. Yeah, we're, we're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. That's a good point. Thank you. <laughs> Project uh, also provides the best long-term plan for supplying the city's water, of course, as I mentioned. Environmental impacts. Uh, the site selected was also chosen because of minimized environmental social disruption and surrounding this area. Because of the lands now, there will not be will not require a lot of tree clearing and there is a large buffer there to um, to quieten the noise and lessen disruptions from locals. Uh, the engineering firm the city has appointed has addressed all 35 factors 
and uh, has no significant adverse impacts to the site. Our uh, worn out facility there at the old water plant, of course, uh, will be replaced by new modern equipment that will ease of maintenance and repair to our staff and enable the best cost of operation. Any inconvenience to residents during this construction will be minimized and construction will occur during daylight hours, off-site, only in public right-of-ways, and the finished project will be fenced, quiet, unobtrusive, and safe for the community. Population to be served, the project the project will serve existing customers in the city of Perry, plus at least some customers served by county water that the city currently buys wholesale in order to serve them. It establishes adequate capacities to meet long-term water demand projects. The expected life for this project is 30 to 40 plus years for the plant and at least 20 years for the wells and mechanical components. Financial impact to the users. The city will be able to pay for this project with existing rates without increase to be made separately for this project. Um, at this time, I can take any questions or comments from the public. And if, again, if you need to review the environmental information document, I have that at my office or city manager. Mr. Murray, I think that last statement you made is very significant. <coughs> <clears throat> the fact that the financial impact to, to the existing ward users will, will not go up um, based on the significant capital improvement that we are making here. Uh, we, are, we are going to be able to absorb this capital improvement and pay for it over time without raising fees. And I right. think that is significant. And the timing could be better because we need a, an alternative to the existing plant that we have that we don't have. Any questions from the public for Mr. McMurray? <coughs> Any questions from council for Mr. McMurray? Thank you, sir. At this time, is there anyone present who wishes to speak for <coughs> this proposal to upgrade the water system as described? wishes to speak against this proposal to upgrade the water system as described. Thank you. This public hearing is now closed. Item 8 is the review of minutes. Item 8A, Council, for your consideration, you have been provided the minutes of the August 14, 2017 work session, the August 15, 2017 three council meeting, the August 15, 2017 council meeting, the August 21, 2017 special meeting, and the August 22, 2017 special meeting. Please note that Council Member Vinan Grace was absent from the August 14th work session. Council, at this time, I will entertain a motion that we approve these minutes as presented with the exception of Ms. Vinan Grace's absence. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Changes, deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, raise your hand. Any abstentions? Ms. Vinan Grace. Please. On the 14th, please let the record indicate Ms. Biden Grace abstains from voting on the 14th work session due to her absence. The motion carries. <coughs> Thank you. Item 9 is old business. Item 9A or ordinances for the second reading and adoption. Item 9A1. This is the second reading of an ordinance amending the period code by adding section 18-36 in the list of places for which parking shall not be allowed 
for the following two additional places, Commerce Street from Macon Road to General Courtney Hodges Boulevard, and Washington Street from Commerce Street to Sam Dunn Boulevard. Chief Lynn. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. I think, uh, I think you basically covered it, but it's the second reading to amend the no parking ordinance by adding those two locations. Do you think further from the police department? No, sir. We have no issue. Thank you, sir. This is the second reading. It is time for adoption. Council, at this time, I will undertake a motion that we adopt this ordinance that amends the period code by adding section 18 36 as described. There's Fair. a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Item 10 is any other old business. Item 10A is any other old business from the mayor. I have none. Item 10B is any other old business from council members. Ms. Final Grace? Mr. Jones? Mr. Walker? No, sir. Mr. Hunt? No, sir. Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Mr. King? No, sir. Thank you. Item 10C is any other old business from the city manager, Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Thank you. And item 10D is any other old business from the city attorney, Mr. Holder? No, sir. Thank you. Item 11 is new business. Item 11A are matters that have been referred from the September 5th, 2017 pre council meeting. Mr. Gilmore, is there any item that we need to address at this time? Okay. Thank you. Item 11B for resolutions for consideration and adoption. 11B1, council, this is a resolution that authorizes the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Georgia Municipal Association for Telecommunications and Right of Way Management Services. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, you have before you a resolution and also an agreement with the Georgia Municipal Association that will allow us to participate in their specialized program and assist us on negotiation with telecommunication companies as they come in and make different changes that they may want to do based on technology. And also it provides a lobbying firm to help protect our franchise fee income, which is under assault both at the federal level and at the state level. And we would recommend to you that you approve the resolution and also the agreement subject to review by the city of office. Of the Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Gilmore at this time? Hearing none, at this time I will entertain a motion that we adopt this resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into the agreement with the Georgia Municipal Association for Telecommunications and Right of Way Management Service subject to city attorney approval of the agreement itself. So moved. Thank you. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11B2. Council, this is a resolution reducing the water and sewer base fee. Mr. Gilmore. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Council, per your policy of constantly going back and reviewing fees and whether they are generating the income that is necessary, uh, we have done that and we're recommending to you to reduce the base fee for the water service. From what? From $4 to $3.20. Thank you, Mr. Gilmore. Is any member of council? Have any? Yes, per month. Per month. Thank you. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. Gilmore regarding this item? Hearing none. Council, at this time I will entertain a motion that we adopt the resolution that reduces the water and sewer base fee as described. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11C is the award of bids. 11C1 is bid number 2018-01. This is the construction of the Frank Satterfield Storm Drainage Improvements. Mr. McMurray. Yes, thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, we have solicited to four companies. Uh, Georgia Water and Environmental Services has reviewed the low bidder, which was the clay construction, and uh, the bid for this project was $39,020.18. This is the stormwater improvements there at Frank Satterfield Road, and uh, city staff recommends approval of this project. Thank you, Mr. McMurray. Does any member of council have any questions of, of staff or Mr. McMurray concerning this project at this time? Mr. Gilmore, what, what is the source of funding for this project? This will be paid for <coughs> the stormwater utility district. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Hearing none, Council, at this time, I'd like to send a motion that we accept the engineer department recommendation to award the bid to the low bidder of $39,020.18 to La Plate Construction, Inc., Perry, Georgia. So moved. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Item 11D. Council will be asked to approve a radar list for the city of Perry. Chief Lynn. Yes, sir, uh, Mayor, Mayor, Council. This um, is a document from the Georgia Department of Transportation, and it lists all the streets in the city limits of Perry where we are authorized uh, by agreement to uh, DOT to run uh, speed enforcement by use of radar and LIDAR. Uh, there are two changes that is what has actually brought this list. I misspoke earlier in the, in the pre council that has brought this to us. We had asked them to review the speed limits on two streets. And so on uh, State Route 11, uh, which uh, is also uh, made in Route 41, it runs uh, uh, in town near the intersection of Pine Hill, they've reduced that from 55 to 50. Uh, same with State Route 127 between the Gray Road and Lake Georgia Road. So those are the two changes to the list, and uh, we just need to have the government <coughs> sign accepting those changes and the remaining business of, uh, of running the speed uh, detection on those roads. Thank you, Chief. Does any member of council have any questions that Chief Lynn concerning this item? Hearing none, at this time I want to obtain a motion that we adopt or approve the radar list for the city of Perry as described by Chief Lynn. Someone say. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11E. This is the Ball Street at Tucker Road Emergency Sewer Rehab Change Order for an additional sewer line and a manhole replacement. Mr. McMurray. Yes, thank you, Mayor Clark. Okay. Um, as you're aware, we have uh, completed our Tucker Ball Street Sewer uh, repairs, emergency repairs. In doing this project, uh, we did some completed some camera work with Georgia Water Environmental Services, and in uh, this area here, we have found several voids. Uh, you'll see pictures here under the uh, asphalt, and part of it is extending to the corner of the building there. Uh, manhole 16-007 to 16008 was in, was required to be replaced. Uh, the existing pipe, like I say, was under the corner of the building and the uh, large boys, which were also receiving a lot of eye eye from this project. Yeah, tell us what a void is. Uh, a void is where there has been a collapse of the sewer line, and the, uh, the dirt above that sewer line has fallen into and washed down the street, so there is a cavity uh, underground. Which, let's see, you can see here in this picture, this is actual camera footage taken, and then the, in the top of this is the top of the pipe where it is gone and the dirt has collapsed down in Washington State. Let's see if we have another photo. You can see this this area here where the pipe is gone in this section and then in this section too. This is three different pictures here. Um, as you know, the Canine Clubhouse has a grand opening uh, coming up, and this is right through their e our easement goes right through the back of their property, and there's an emergency to get it repaired as quickly as possible. The Rene Group had completed the contract work out on Ball Street and Tucker in a reasonable, timely fashion. They also had won our previous bid for this project as low bidder and done an excellent job. So their um, change order was used on the line items that were received from the original bid. The change order totals $60,294 for the additional line of abandonment, filling with grout, and manhole replacement in this project. 
which was a pretty large uh, project itself to bypass the old line of Andy and the field of the So uh, city staff, of course, recommends approval from council uh, to move forward. Thank you, Mr. McMurray. Does any member of council have any questions of Mr. McMurray at this time? Hearing none, at this time I'll entertain a motion that we approve the change order for the Ball Street and Tucker Road Emergency Sewer Rehab change order for an additional sewer line of manhole replacement in the amount of $60,294. There's a motion in the second. Any uh, discussion? Mr. Gilmore, we have sufficient funds to pay this. Correct. Uh, 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 that's the question. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor, raise your hand. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 11F is a special event application. Item 11F1, a couple of jerks. That's the name of a business, by the way. Um, is partnering with Perry Main Street Promotion Committee to host a classic car event downtown on Friday, November 11, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Chief Lynn. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Council, the special event application has been reviewed by the police department uh, and we're consulting with fire. Uh, we're good with the proposed plan. They're asking for uh, Council to approve closure of uh, 78900 block of Carroll, uh, as well as journey between journey between Commerce and Maine and Ball between Commerce and Maine. This is our standard uh, closure around the old courthouse. The original application had also asked for Washington to be closed without the meeting with the gentleman uh, that street's been removed. And I thought maybe he was here tonight, but he's not here. Um, the, um, I think that's about it as far as we're concerned. It's a, an event we can stack and support. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Lynn. Do we need to include the state request in here? Okay. Anything further, Chief Lynn? No, sir. Thank you, Council. You have heard um, the request from the review by Chief Lynn. You have uh, seen the application. And this time I will entertain a motion that we approve uh, the a couple of jerks uh, partnership with the Perry Main Street Promotion Committee in hosting this classic car event on Friday, November 11, from 5 to 10, with the street closures as uh, described by Chief Lynn. Mr. Mayor, could I make one correction? It should be Saturday, November 11. Okay, Saturday, November 11. Thank you, Ms. Ezra. Did, he, all right. Did anybody make a motion? Yeah. Okay. Will you agree to a change from Friday to Saturday? I agree. Thank you. Did, now, did we have a second? Second. Okay. For, with the change. With the change. Okay. Saturday. 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 Thanks. Sir. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. <coughs> motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Gilmore, is there anything under item 11 new business that we need to address at this time? No, sir. Thank you. Item 12 has already been addressed. Item 13, a council member item. Ms. Bonham Grace? Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Walker? No, sir. Mr. Hunt? No. Mr. Jackson? No, sir. Mr. King? No, sir. Mr. Gilmore? No, sir. Amen. Mr. Alder? No, sir. Thank you. Item 14, the department head staff items. From the Department of Finance and Administration, Ms. King. Yes, sir. Thank you. From the Department of Community Development, Mr. Wood. Yes, sir. From the Department of Economic Development, Mr. Smith. One thing, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> on behalf of the Perry Housing Team, uh, great news for the City of Perry. Uh, as you are aware, the City was awarded a grant of $722,000 for the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Uh, it's a community development block grant that will be go that will go towards um, housing improvements in Sand Hill neighborhood. Um, as you're aware, the city's been working for the past year in improving housing in that neighborhood, and this grant will allow us to continue that work in rehabilitating eight homes, reconstructing three homes, and actually clearing, um, clearing five dilapidated vacant structures. Um, so again, this, this grant will be incredible. It will allow us to continue our work in that neighborhood. It will directly benefit 77 people 
Um, and of those 77 people, 71 are actually low to moderate income, which is the, the target demographic for CDBG grants. Um, and uh, we'll look for work to begin sometime in January on this grant. And if anyone has any questions about it, please contact me, Robert Smith, uh, Perry Housing Team Leader at 478-988-2757. We'd be happy to help you out and answer any questions you might have. Uh, it's a, another great day for the city of Perry. Um, you know, bringing in outside dollars is always a great thing. Um, and we look forward to getting working on it. Thank Very you. good news. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Very good news. Superb, Robert. Absolutely. From the Department of Leisure Services, Mr. Dye. Always hard following progress. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have anything anywhere near that. hundreds of thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 it's not really near that exciting to share, but I do have some fun news. Uh, our soccer and football seasons will officially start Saturday, September the 16th at 9 a.m. Uh, and I'm about to announce, you've probably seen on social media if you haven't, it'll be out there. Basketball registration starts October 16th to the 20th. Uh, yeah, it's already that time. Um, other than just please check our social media and our website. The prices are going to be relatively close to what they are every year. Uh, just you know, as far as we run these programs at, at a break even strategy, so we try to keep the cost as minimal as possible. Basketball is our largest sport. We had 330 players last year. Expect the same, maybe a little bit more. So uh, just ask everybody, if you have any questions, come talk to us, call us, email us, Facebook us. Uh, we'd love to have your children and look forward to having that sport this year, too. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. From the police department, Chief Lynn. I think I've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. From Fire Emergency Services, Chief Parker. Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. And from our media specialist, Ms. Palmer. Yes, Mayor. Um, Mayor and Council, just one quick thing. You should have see, received some information from me today on the um, park survey. Per your request, we went out and asked the public for their input on naming the two um, entryway welcome parks, the Third Street site and the JC site. So you should have that information from me. And if you have any questions, just let me know. scheduled for September the 11th, which is uh, this coming Monday. Please check. Uh, the city of, uh, the three cities in the county typically get together and the city of Centerville is hosting a 9-11 uh, remembrance service Monday, September 11th at 8.30 at the Centerville Law Enforcement Center on East Church Street in Centerville. And the Perry Music Festival is coming up a week from Saturday on the 16th at Rotary Centennial Park, beginning at noon or somewhere close to that. 
Our next regularly scheduled work session will be on the 18th of September at 5 p.m. in this room. The next regularly scheduled pre-council meeting and council meeting will be on the 19th. The pre-council meeting is upstairs in the conference room and the council meeting is in this room. Five o'clock and six o'clock respectively. That's all the um, announcements for that. The only other item I have is I wanted to take a point of personal privilege. Um, we just completed another um, session, if you will, for myself and these three members to my left, near right, for re-election. Um, you may have seen in the paper, if you have not, no one qualified against myself or any one of these individuals. Um, I wanted to personally thank the citizens of Perry, uh, speaking for myself, uh, for the uh, confidence that is shown. But because of that, we don't please everybody. That's not our goal. But we do think that we are headed in the right direction. And it is a very humbling experience for me um, for, for that not to happen, if you will, from that standpoint. I am um, looking very much forward to serving the citizens of Perry and working with these men and women, inclusive of the, the, the staff and the employees for the city of Perry, to continue the, the stellar service that we, we give and to support uh, the, our staff administration in the, in the efforts that they are putting forth every single day in order to keep the city of Perry where it is, and that's a step above and a head above everybody else. It doesn't happen by accident, and sometimes myself and, in fact, council need to get out of the way so that our staff can get the job done, and, and y'all do a pretty good job of telling us when we do get in the way, and we appreciate that from that standpoint. But in all seriousness, it, it is very humbling for me, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve the citizens for another four-year term, and I look forward to it. Would y'all like to say anything? That's fine, Greg. Well, as a public servant, I was relatively sure we were going in the right direction, and I was hopeful that they would see that the service that I was providing for our citizens was in the best interest of all. And I want to thank them for sending me back. I'll echo your comments, Mayor, but it is very humbling uh, to realize you do have a sense of confidence of the people that you represent. Uh, I'm very thankful for that and very humbled by that. And I look forward to the next term of accomplishing even more on behalf of the citizens that we all represent. And I would say more I'm looking at much more forward to doing it uh, alongside the people on this bench. I think something that does set us apart, as you said, Mayor, is the respect that Mayor and Council we have for one another. We are not perfect. We do make mistakes and at times we disagree and God forbid vote against one another. But even with that, at the end of the day, we still care for one another. And I think that matters. Uh, and I think that represents the values of the good people of the city of Perry and our party. Well, I, I just want to count on what you said. Uh, it's been a rewarding eight years. I'm serving in my eighth year, and I've never worked with a group of people who really had the city of Perry as in their best interest. Uh, there is a very cooperative nature about this group, along with the city manager, of us focusing on the things to do that is in the best interest of our constituents. And it's, like you said, a very humbling experience to do that and move the city of Perry forward. I would like to correct the record, though, that I am not running or have not run <laughs> for an office in Centerville as the paper has <laughs> reported, but I didn't know I could serve in two different jurisdictions. I'm proud to serve in the city of Perry. <laughs> We're not giving you up that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Guys, on this end of the table, you're stuck with us for, for y'all's terms another two years, or at least the next two years. And, and I don't apologize for that because, as has already been said, we do work well together. We don't always agree from that standpoint, and that's as it should be. But, uh, but I think we have, a, we have a good thing going 
the citizens of Pierre have a good thing going. But we want to make certain that we continue all of those efforts as we have in the past and moving forward. And I, and I, I too, thank you again, uh, Mr. Gilmore, Mr. Holbert, the, the department heads, the staff, the employees. Um, Y'all make our job very easy uh, because you do it right and you do it right the first time. And when you don't, you come to us with the issues and we, we try very hard to take all of the uh, perspectives into consideration and, and give guidance where it's needed from that standpoint. And we thank you for the job that you continue to do. If y'all want to say anything, I don't leave anybody out. Okay. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but no thank you. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Y'all. Well, well, thank you. This, uh, the, the cities. Means we can have a look. And because of that, um, it is a minor note, but it is significant. Um, there's three things that have happened here. And uh, by operation of state law, Mr. Holbrook, the way I understand it, there's no uh, opponents or incumbents, number one. Number two, there are no there were no write-in candidates uh, that had qualified. And number three, there are no referendums on, on the ballot that would have been on the ballot for this particular election in November. And because those three things are, are true, state law says that each incumbent will have uh, been deemed to have voted for themselves because that's a requirement to get elected. And uh, once that is put into place, then there will be no election. So there will not be a city election this November because of that and because of what we have been talking about up here. And that saves the city some money. We contract with the county, Houston County, to conduct our elections with the Board of Elections. And we um, are thankful, I'm sure they are as well, that there will be no city election this November. Again, I thank you. If there's nothing else to come before us, we stand adjourned. Thank you for your interest in this election. Okay.